When I started out, frankly, I thought that uh, it's a simple buoy. You know, it's just a it's just a ball about this big floating on the surface and a string of thermometers hanging down. What could be simpler? They've already deployed them in other parts of the world. This is going to be so easy. But we have had trouble. We are still in the early years of this project, and so we are working with a, a few different buoy manufacturers, and we're basically buying them from all the different manufacturers. And today we are on Puget Sound doing an, a comparison between two buoys. What we're comparing between the two buoys is the accuracy with which they measure temperature, uh, whether one heats up during the day in a, in, a, in a realistic way, or maybe it's heating up too much because maybe it's, it's painted black and it shouldn't be. This year, we're finally, I think, building buoys that we can trust more. The goal of my project is to measure a part of the world that is very hard to measure, it turns out, because what we're trying to measure is the, is the uh, upper ocean in the part of the Arctic where in the summertime it's ice free, there's no ice floating around, it just looks like any other ocean, and in the winter it's covered by ice. And you can imagine uh, between those two seasons there are chunks of ice forming and crashing into each other. It's a very dangerous and dynamic environment. And so you put a buoy out there floating innocently in the water and the ice flows come and crash into it and smash it to smithereens. And unfortunately, I think that's happening to a lot of my buoys. And it's a, it's a, it's a tough place for a buoy to survive. So these buoys are actually quite simple. Up-tempo buoys, they're called. Upper temperature of the ocean. And really, they're just measuring temperature. We can measure how warm the ocean's getting from outer space, from satellites that orbit the Earth, and measure the, the very surface layers of the, of the Arctic Ocean when the ice goes away. But we don't really know uh, what are the temperatures below the surface. Satellites can't help us with that. So for that, we need to be there and measure, measure temperatures in the water. It's nice to leave something there to just measure things automatically. And for that, we build these buoys to do that. So scientists, science really uh, is hard, you know, and things don't work at first, and or they partly work, and you have to figure out what's going wrong and uh, try to fix it. And with field work like we're doing today and like we do in the Arctic, uh, things happen, and you're out there in the field, and you've paid a lot of money to take an icebreaker out there, you know, and you have to try your best to get it to work right then, you know. You use your, your wits and you use your tools, and you do your best uh, if something's not quite working right to get it to work right. Sometimes you fail and you have to bring the thing back home again and figure out what went wrong and do it again next year. But uh, very often the engineers who work with us can figure out what went wrong and, and we can get it out there.